Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to port forward a Belkin router. Now this should be the same for most Belkin routers, they try and keep the software the same, um, but on some older machines you might notice a little bit of a difference, okay? Now I've got one of Belkin's newest routers, the uh, the um, dual band N600 router, very nice, very sleek in design. Before that I had an N150, which was probably about five, maybe six years old. Anyway, let's jump straight into it. I'm going to show you how to do port forward. Now, if you don't know what port forwarding is, um, I don't know why you're on this video really, but basically port forwarding is that you open your gateway on your router so that people can either come in, join games with you, or software can talk to their servers, stuff like that. But anyway, on Belkin, the easiest way to get into it is if you go to a web browser, go up to your address bar, and this is the same for every single Belkin. You want to go 192.168.2.1. That's um, the gateway to your router. Hit enter, and you'll be presented with a Belkin page. Now, you have basically your current status page shows you a few things like what your firmware is and what's your current upload download speeds stuff like that but what you want to do is down the left hand side you get all this um, like panels uh, these lead to different things that you can do so for example I can change LAN settings my connection type add DNS servers on it um, Wi-Fi protected whatever blah 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 um, but the main thing you want to do when it comes to port forwarding, you have one under your firewall settings called virtual servers. So you want to go into that. It'll ask for a password. Now, normally by default, it's blank. Um, unless if whoever's the admin to your router or whatever um, has put password on it, then yeah, punch that in. If you don't know the password, you can reset it. Um, basically, plug up your computer to the router via an Ethernet cable, and down the bottom you have reset to factory defaults, and it should be back to normal. But you'll have to punch in all your details again. So in this case, I'm going to go submit. Normally, you'll get this window, does nothing, just close it. This is basically your ports. So you have down the left hand side 1 to 20, so you can have 20 different gates open. Um, just the enable box, you have a description. So I'm going to start here and run through them step by step. So first of all, we're going to start with port 1. I'm going to say open up a, a Minecraft port. This is the most common thing that people are looking for. So I'm just going to type in Minecraft. You can name it whatever you wanted to. Uh, the inbound port is normally 25565 for um, for Minecraft anyway. Now, on older routers or even some new routers, depending on your software, you may have two boxes, one that says inbound port and another that says inbound port. It's so that you can do like 25565. The next port you could say is going to be 25566, just so you get those two ports together. If you've just got the one port, you can leave it as that, or if you're doing multiple ports, you can go dash, um, and I want that to go all the way up to 30,000 is the port so anything between 25565 and 30,000 is basically going to be open for Minecraft but in this case because I know it's just uh, 25565 I'm going to leave it as that what you can do in this next bit is type there's uh, two types of gateways to open um, most manufacturers will tell you what type it will need to be if it's going to be TCP or UDP um, if I remember right I think Minecraft is TCP but if you're ever unsure you could always leave it as both on that side of things. Um, actually it might be worthwhile just leaving it as both unless if you have ports that are going to be the same across the board. Next thing, your private IP address. Now when I first started out I thought it was just a random number you punched in here but it's not. It's the actual IP of your computer where you're going to be hosting things. Now there's a um, there is a way of finding it out on a Windows machine. I, I honestly couldn't tell you how to do it. You have to do something with your run program and terminal and so on. It tells you but with uh, a Mac it's very simple go to your system preferences go to network and as long as you're selected on your Ethernet or if you're on Wi-Fi whichever one you're using on the main page here you'll see it says IP address this is the IP address of your computer on your network so for instance this is number three so what you want to do in this case I'll just move that aside I want to punch in three private port you can do whatever you want I just do 25565 again and there you go, that's a port done. So I go enable, that's actually set up for you. 
to actually get it applied just go down the bottom and go apply changes now I'm not going to do it because uh, whenever you do add or apply changes it does restart your router so bear that in mind if someone's using the system on your network wait until they're finished because it will restart your router and change your IP if you're on a dynamic IP system okay so it was very straightforward it's very very simple to do if still having trouble troubles um, trying to set it up if you go to my website which is pnpos.wordpress.com there is actually a step-by-step -step guide there for you and it does show you the illustrations all the pictures anything detail wise and how to go through it so certainly go check that out